You know, whether you see this Ruger Mark IV 2245 light as bling that rings, or, or a Buck Rogers ray gun is going to depend a lot on how many birthdays you've had. Here and welcome to Tales from Target Suite, where I'll share my perspective on guns and shooting, and we'll have an adventure or two that will make even a grown man smile. And um, gosh, what an interesting looking gun. Kind of reminds me of one of the James Bond uh, movies, but I liked it because it has a, uh, it is one of the Mark IVs that has the, the, uh, the uh, 1911 geometry in the handle. And uh, this light version was really um, caught the eye of some of the younger shooters in our family, and so I thought, well, let's give it a try. And, um, and it's been in the family a long time and I'm just now getting around to shooting it. I shot it yesterday, trashed all of that content and uh, started again today. It's really harder for me to shoot. And of course, you know me, I'm not a pistolero, but it's harder for me to shoot than some of my other uh, handguns like these on the table. And uh, in fact, right now, I'm gonna give you a close up look at this guy and then these other mystery guns here, one of which we're gonna shoot here in a few minutes. The Mark series of uh, Ruger uh, 22 long rifle firearms has been on a journey since way back when. I can't remember when Bill Ruger came out with the first one, but it may have been in the early 50s, maybe late 40s. You let me know in the comments. But one thing I've always not liked about those guns is how hard they are to take apart. And, um, and I've got here the Buckmark, the Ruger Buck, I'm sorry, the Browning Buckmark. This has been our kind of go-to casual gun for, uh, for 22 semi-auto shooting. And uh, I really like it. It's a lot, a um, lot easier to shoot than this guy because it's got a longer barrel, and it weighs about um, 11 ounces more than this light version of the the 4.4 uh, inch barrel Mark IV 2245 light. And so this is easier to shoot. It's got as nice a trigger, at least about the same weight. And I'll show you those trigger pulls here in just a minute. But I posted a video three years ago about taking this guy apart and cleaning it and getting it back together, and it's a beast. And let me show you how hard it is to take this one apart. First of all, we have to cock it. Put the safety on, and push this button. Just like that. Bolt comes out, couldn't be, couldn't be easier. And there's been a lot of content already about this gun, but that's how easy it is to take apart. That way you can get access to the uh, all of the surfaces you need to clean and lubricate. But what a nice looking gun. And um, we're going to shoot it some more. In fact, um, I think I'm going to show you those other three guns. I'll tell you what they are, and um, including the Buckmark. So right now, I'm going to see if I can't do a better job of getting shots on steel. It's really been a problem for me, as always, but certainly with this gun. Well, that was a little bit better. This gun does have a um, have a characteristic that's been well documented online, and it certainly works with my with my hand shape. And that is that this knuckle right here will often kick the safety up into about a halfway position, and um, and you can't fire the gun. And so there is an aftermarket solution for that. You can find it online, but uh, I have to be careful, or I wind up losing a round, and that's just the way it is. But Easy to take apart. This bottle, the uh, light version, has a um, has a one-piece aluminum receiver and barrel shroud, and so inside there is a very narrow diameter barrel. It's about three eighths of an inch, but this is all aluminum. Whereas on the other Mark IVs, it is a steel receiver with a steel barrel, a solid steel barrel, and so those guns are much heavier. Uh, 8 to 10 ounces heavier than this one and with the short barrel and uh, the lightweight it makes this a little bit more difficult to shoot longer barrels a little bit heavier weight they get stable in the hand a lot easier so I'm going to yak too much about that 
But uh, those are all just excuses because you can learn to shoot anything um, better than you do right now. And that's what I need to do with this guy. I will say the family likes this gun. It's got a little bit of personality that the uh, blued steel and walnut offerings that I have so many of, they just don't have the same attractiveness to the uh, younger shooters in the family. So uh, it's getting a lot of attention lately. But you saw those... Um, you saw those guns, there is the uh, buck mark of a horse, and we'll shoot that here in just a minute. And uh, then there is the high standard Victor. Uh, it is a um, fantastic, high quality firearm. And then there is the Smith & Wesson Model 41, which has been around forever. I'm not gonna shoot either one of those because they're not in the same category as this gun right here, and also the buck mark. And so now that I have this loaded up, let me load up the uh, buck mark, and we'll just shoot this guy. Yeah, it also has a 45 like grip frame um, angle, and so it's one thing I liked about the buckmark. There it is, Browning buckmark. So there you have it. That is definitely easier to shoot. Um, now, it could be that I'm more familiar with this gun, but uh, but yeah, I'm having a hard time with uh, some of those smaller targets, even here at 17 yards or so. But uh, that's some of that is my fault. It's got a decent trigger. It has about the same trigger. In fact, I'm going to show you a video right now, and I'll just show you all of those, all four of these guns, and uh, what their trigger pull is. It'll tell you a little something about, well, enjoy. So there you have it, the uh, three pound, three and a half pound-ish trigger pull here. We've got a similar three pound trigger pull on the Buckmark and the uh, Smith & Wesson and that uh, High Standard Victor. Wow, those are just fantastic triggers, very crisp. So let me shoot these rounds and I'll see if I can flip those paddles with some careful aiming and then I'll show you how, uh, how this trigger works. All right, that's a little bit better, um, but it does have a long take up. So they have that, and then there is quite a bit of take up when you pull. So not an ideal trigger. We do have a, a Volkwarzen uh, trigger replacement that we're gonna put in this gun eventually, but uh, not for this video. But let me pull up a chair here. I'm gonna shoot some, uh, I'm gonna shoot some rounds off, of, off the bench and just see what kind of uh, group size we can get um, at about, uh, let's see, let's shoot at about 25 yards and see what it looks like. So as you can tell, the, uh, the problems with accuracy in that gun are mine, not the gun. That's a pretty darn good uh, two inch group. And uh, so anytime that I miss, it's really my fault. I do have two other kinds of ammo to shoot. Uh, subs, these are, we've been shooting um, 1,255 foot per second Winchester M22 rounds. Uh, so those are high velocity. 
and uh, let's shoot some CCI standard velocity. This is at uh, 10,070 feet per second, and see that's out of a rifle, of course. And let's see how um, how it cycles with standard velocity ammo. Maybe not at all. Okay, and I will say I have uh, I have shot this a lot uh, over the last two days with the sub with the uh, um, a, uh, with the subsonic ammo, and it has never misfired. And uh, when I started the uh, started the video work a couple of days ago, first thing I did was clean it. It was filthy dirty, and I told my son about it, and he's like, "Dad, I was kind of doing a um, on a uh, a test to see how many rounds we could put through it." without cleaning and uh, they had put a few hundred rounds through and it was still firing great of course i messed that up but there have been no failures to feed and aside from with the winchester ammo no failures to fire so great gun lightweight um, easy to pack around it's you just have to get used to the lightweight if you're going to try to shoot accurately the gun definitely has the potential and um, i'm going to put a red dot sorry about the wind I'm going to put a red dot on it, and we're going to make another video here coming up because um, I got one. So not only do I have a golden gun, but I also have a red dot. Go figure. But thank you for watching. Um, it's been a joy to be out here. It's pleasant. It's mid to upper 90s. The wind's blowing, low humidity. This is a far cry from what we've had. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.